I think if you if you sat Modi ji down next to God, Modi ji would start explaining to God how the universe works. Yes, and and God would get confused that what have I created? If you believed in anger, hatred, arrogance, you'd be sitting in a BJP meeting, and I would be doing man ki baat. So now they have asked me to answer your questions. That also would not happen in a BJP meeting. That the Tamil language, it is not just a it is not just a language and i will never ever allow tamil language to be threatened right because because for me threatening the tamil language is to threaten the idea of india price uh, of education price of healthcare these are the real issues bjp can't really discuss them so then they have to do the whole skeptor thing lying down and doing all that aren't you happy i am not lying down Sam Petroda ji said that he grew up with all people living happily different languages different religions and that is what is being attacked also the tradition in india and again something leaders like guru nanak ji basavana ji gandhi ji emphasized was not to be under the impression that you know everything that the world is too big too complicated for any one person to think that he understands everything and he knows everything and so really that is the disease that sam that sam sort of outlined that is the disease that we have a group of people in india who are absolutely convinced that they know everything in fact i think they think maybe they know even more than god <laughs> they could they could sit down with god and have a conversation and explain to him you know about what is going on and of course our prime minister is one such specimen I think I think if you if you sat Modi ji down next to God Modi ji would start explaining to God how the universe works. Right? Yes and and God would get confused that what have I created? <laughs> so so these are these are funny things but but really this is what is going on we have a group of people you know who understand everything they can speak to scientists and explain science to them they can you know speak to historians and explain history to them they can explain you know warfare to the army flying to the air force whatever they want they can you know and at the heart of it is mediocrity that they actually don't understand anything because because in life you cannot understand anything if you're not ready to listen there's something the biggest lesson i learned from bharat jodo yatra that there is something to learn from everybody we are much older than those children but i can guarantee you they can teach us all how to sing i was looking at the, i was looking at them and i was saying you know i can't sing like that it's impossible so when you look at another person you have to appreciate that they have an experience they have a life they've seen things and maybe you can learn a lot from them maybe if you open your ears you can listen to them and learn from them and that is actually the indian tradition if you look if you look at our country you will find that our country has the ability to absorb any idea that comes india India has never rejected any idea. Everybody who has come to India has been received with open arms and their ideas have been absorbed in India. And that is the India that we like. India that respects the rest of the world, 
India that is humble, India that listens, India that is affectionate. And that is the India that you represent. You would not be here if you do not if you did not agree with these values. You would if you if you believed in anger, hatred, arrogance, you'd be sitting in a BJP meeting. <laughs> right? And I would be doing monkey bath. So, 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 thank you very much for holding up the Indian flag in America, showing the American people what it means to be Indian, respecting them, respecting their culture, learning from them, and also allowing them to learn from you. You make us all proud. And we think of our country, you are all our ambassadors. When America says Indian people are extremely intelligent, Indian people are masters of IT, Indian people are respectful, all these ideas that have come, they've come because of you and because of your actions and your behaviors. So I thank you very much for that. Love you, love you. Love you. Now, now they've asked me. Now they've asked me to answer your questions. Yes. See few, that few questions. That that also would not happen in a BJP meeting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, no, no questions there. Okay. <laughs> Only answers. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Could you please sit down? Thank you. Thank you. So we have many organizations which support. Four or five it. questions. Yes, sir. Okay, quick. Yes. Or or opinions. It doesn't. Whatever. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so we have. Ask people questions. They automatically assume <laughs> opinion is included. Yes. So we have uh, we have women who played major contribution for this program to be successful. We have women empowerment organization which helped us to make this event successful. So they have a question specific to women, and uh, I would request. Uh, Ms. Chansi Redigaru to ask that Mike question. Do, Mike do. Should give me the other mic? Welcome Ra Rahul Ji no? for uh, California. And, um, as a Women Empowerment Telugu Association, my name is Chansi Reddy. So I would like to ask you two questions regarding this women bill that has been uh, you know, in, the, in, the, in the court for almost more than half a century. So when the Congress comes in power, which, which women's bill? the women's, women's reservation yeah. rights. So that bill has been there for more than a quarter century. So as a Congress leader, what is your thoughts on it and how are you going to deal with it? That's of my first question. The second question is, you know, in India, it's very hard for a woman as a safety issue. So what are we going to, you know, offer our next generation of the girls in India? Thank you. So on the women's reservation bill, we are committed to that. We wanted to pass it in the last government, but some of our allies were not too happy with it. Uh, and they didn't give us the support for that bill. But I'm confident when we come to power, we'll pass that bill. Um, it's, I think it's... I think part of the answer to your second question lies in the first question. If we empower women, if we involve women in the political system, if we give women space in the governance of the country, uh, if we give women space in the businesses of the country, we will automatically make them safer. So I think involving them in politics, involving them in business, involving them in running the country are the way to give them power. Hello, Ragulji. My name is Pugal Anbu. I'm the president of Indo-American Society for Science, Reason, and Free Thought. I also represent uh, Tamils who live in Bay Area. On behalf of our people, and on behalf of people who believe in science, reason, and free thought, I would like to point out the, uh, we are honored, humble, and most truly proud of your journey about opening up the shops of love on the streets of hate all over the India. 
Tamils have long tradition of harboring brotherhood mindset throughout their civilization. 3,000 years ago, our forefathers said, Yadu Mure, Yavarum Kelir, Pirapokkum Yalla Uyerkum. Translation. All human beings are created equal and every town is our town, everybody is our relative. To us, India is like European Union, with each state having its own language, its own tradition, its own festivals, its own cuisine, dress code, way of living, etc., etc. They are all different, yet we live under one country called India. Therefore, it is deeply saddening to us when someone from the Union government trying to impose one language, one culture, one tradition, one religion, one school, etc. <laughs> Recognizing this diversity to make India the most robust country, our beloved leader, the Dravidian icon, former Chief Minister Dr. C. N. Anathurai proclaimed both in parliament and in public forums for Manilatil Suyachi Matil Kutachi, which means autonomous rule at the state level and federal rule at the union level. Dear Rahulji, you have studied in America and you have traveled within the United States extensively and you know much better than anyone else in this room that America is the best example of federalism. Each state has its own constitution, its own Supreme Court apart from federal laws. Whereas in India, Congress party did have its own share of problems in the past, but the times have changed. The new thinking has emerged and you are the epitome of the new thinking. You are the pen of hope and the streets of hate in India. Therefore, my question to you is that like United States of America, what's your thought on making India as a true United States of India? Thank you, Ji. If you, Thank if you, you read our constitution, the definition of India in the constitution is a union of states. And within our constitution is the idea that the languages, cultures, histories of each one of our states has to be protected under the union. So what you're talking about is already incorporated in our constitution. It's already there. The BJP and the RSS are attacking that idea that you mentioned and also the constitution of India. That's, that's the fact. Now, for me personally, I understand that the Tamil language is more than a language to Tamil people. Right? It is not just a it is not just a language. It is their history, it is their culture, it is their way of life. And I will never ever allow Tamil language to be threatened. Right? Because, because for me, threatening the Tamil language is to threaten the idea of India. Just like threatening Bengali or threatening Kannada or threatening Hindi or threatening Punjabi are all attacks on India. Right? So, our strength, unlike many other countries, our strength comes from our diversity. Our strength comes from accepting that we are all different, but we can work together. And that is an idea that I'm sure you and the Congress party are protecting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Please put your questions brief, respecting everyone's time. I know you have opinions, but please question, put your questions brief. Uh, next question is Mr. Karthik from Ambedkar King Study Circle. Okay. Can we allow people to... Yeah, hold on. Yes, yes. These are, please, appreciate, please appreciate these organizations have put together this amazing event. All There are Telugu, Tamil, Kerala, Kannada, all of together to make this event successful. Respect those organizations. Thank you. No. We'll do, we'll do. Just deep. We've got five questions, don't worry. Deep. Just ask. There's more than enough. We can add a few also if you want.
हेलो राहुल जी आई एम गणपति फ्रॉम द अंबेडकर किंग स्टडी सर्कल फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वेलकम टू सैन फ्रांसिस्को बेरिया वी होल हार्टेडली थैंक यू फॉर टेकिंग अप द फाइट अगेंस्ट द फैसिजम सो दिस राइस ऑफ फैसिजम इज नॉट अ मेयर को इंसिडेंस Uh, so we believe in the social and the economic equality in the society and uh, the inequality actually creates a conducive environment for fascism to emerge so uh, my question is like uh, what is the plan of the indian national congress to uproot the economic and the social inequality which creates this condition for fascism in the indian subcontinent and also at the global level one of the things that we are suggesting Uh, is when we were in government we had carried out a caste census and the idea behind the caste census was to take an x ray of indian society right to find out what are the exact demographics of our country right what are the different communities what are the different castes how many people in each community how many people in each caste because without understanding our demographics and without understanding who is who it is very difficult to distribute uh, wealth distribute power effectively so that was one idea that we had and we've been putting pressure on the bjp to release the caste census the numbers in the caste census they are of course not doing it and we'll continue to apply pressure and if we come to power we will we will do that but we are committed as the congress party to make india a fair place and we understand deeply that india today in terms of its treatment of dalits tribals poor people minorities is not a fair place right and there is many many things that can be done there is the nyai scheme that we had which is which was aimed at providing a minimum income to all indians there are ideas like manrega i think an increase in public education increase in public health care i think these are all things that can be done to make india a much more equal and fair place thank you thank you we have we have our next question from silicon valley christian community uh, mr jay rahul ji um, now the parliament lok, uh, lok sabha seats are increasing to 888 uh, what's your take on it Th- there's a proposal that you know th- um, you know modi ji is actually working on it is going to entirely be based on population it is going to tilt you know the orientation towards the highly populous states getting more and more lion share of the revenues and everything so how is it going to change everything you know it's minorities are going to get even more depressed you know majorities are going to be you know uh, making everybody vulnerable so uh, what's your your take on it i'd have to i'd have to look at exactly how they are thinking about doing it uh but i think one has to be very very careful when one change, changes the representative structure of a country uh so i'd be quite interested in understanding exactly how they've come up with the number 800 and what are the criteria that they're using these things should not be done flippantly uh india is a conversation india is a negotiation between its languages between its people between its histories and cultures and it, that negotiation has to be fair meaning all parts of india all the states of india should feel that there is fairness in the process of negotiation um if i if i see exactly how they are coming up with 800 and what is the design then i would be able to answer whether i agree with the number 800 uh, but i haven't seen the way they are calculating it yeah but it depends how they how the ratios change 
Yeah, it is currently based on the population, yes. but you'll have to un you'll have to yes, see sir. how the ratios change. You know, I think the Parliament House, these are these are distractions. The real issues in India are unemployment, price rise, spread of anger and hatred, uh, a crumbling education system, price uh, of education, price of health care. These are the real issues. Uh, BJP can't really discuss them, so then they have to do the whole sceptre thing. You know, lying down and doing all that. So. Aren't you happy I'm not lying down? <laughs> Thank you. Minnambalam.com Tamil Mobile Patrikai